of themselves um, to make her life more comfortable uh, along this journey. And uh, there were there's some key people that I wanted to formally thank. I've been thanking them along this whole process, but I don't know if Valerie's on here uh, or Bobby or Asha or Vi, but, and then of course, Rachman, um, you all were um, tremendous in uh, what you did sacrificing to help on Sharon and care, help us care for her. And so I just wanted to formally thank you for that. Yeah. Thank she, you so much. She was very grateful. <laughs> Make her life better. And that's it. I and mean, if anyone I, I, I forgot, please charge it to my head, not my heart, as they say. Yeah, I mean, and and thank you so much to you, Heather, and to Cheryl, Sam, Taylor, to to your family, and how much effort and and how much heart you put into taking care of Sharon. Um, I don't think anyone has um, not noticed and not appreciated that, and 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 all of this, even getting to this point, yeah. Um, yeah. And thank you for putting this together. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Go, Jenna. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, so, so we'll um, uh, get started um, kind of naming out first, like how, how awful it is to not really be in person and connected, um, especially for um, someone like Sharon, who is so in community, so in family, so invested in so many things. And I, I think a lot of us really wish we could, can be with her and be in person together, but I'm glad we we're able to at least have this platform to do it and, and know that we're holding in our hearts when we can actually hold space in person to get together that we, that we will. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, just a little overview of today. I'm gonna we're gonna sh play a, a video um, and then make sure that all of her um, all of her brothers first get a chance to speak and really um, share sh share any joy and and words about Sharon and, and who she was first and um, then based off of how much time we have left, we'll open the floor up for people um, to speak out. Um, and we'll we'll do our best to be mindful of time because there are quite a few people in here. Um, and then too, also if if you're able to 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 use the chat as much as possible to to um, share whatever words you have um, that you'd like to share, um, even just to tell us like you know how you know her um, would be really meaningful to us. Um, Yes, someone call me. Yes, uh, this is Paulette. I just wanted to say something maybe while you're working on that, may I? Yes. Okay, okay. I, had a little, I had a little technical difficulties as well. But okay. um, finally got back on, uh, met Sharon at Fauche Junior High School. Uh, we've been friends ever since. Sharon was always a sweet, loving, kind person, uh, always very inspirational. Uh, we talked uh, the Thursday before her transitioning and. We told each other how we loved each other and we appreciated each other. So I just want to say to the family, you're constantly in our prayers and she will definitely be missed, gone too soon, but we know that the Lord knows best. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amen. Thank you, Amen. Thank you Amen. Paulette. So you glad you were Thank you. Yeah, I've been here, but it took me off. So I just tried to get back on. Well, you know, you don't care about me if they hear you and not. Uh, that's wrong with that. <laughs> Oh, oh, there they are. See <laughs> Hello, family. Hey. Hey, can y'all hear me? Who is that, man? Hey, Ruby. Ruby. Hey, Ruby. Hey, can we? Uh, hey. How you trying to listen? So, Maxie, cut on that light. While we are waiting, me, uh, I just want to say it is so good to see all the friends and the family that have come 
There's 98 people on here um, honoring Aunt Sharon, you know? Wow. She touched our lives individually and remarkably in so many ways. And, uh, and this is just a, a remnant of, you know, the impact that she had on people and how much we loved her and we'll always love her. Um, so. But you can't hear him. That's not can't hear him. Who said they can't hear me? This beautifully done, Jenna. Beautifully done. Can you hear me? Oh yeah. Thank you. Sorry about all the glitches getting started, but um put this back up so we can see. So they can see us, Nicole. You can Wonderful see job, it. Jenna. Beautiful. Thank you. Um I think you did a great job. This is Joe Ryan. Yes, I went through a lot of different emotions watching that video. It was wonderful. Thank you, thank you. Um, so, so now I want to um, um, give yeah all her brothers an opportunity to speak. Um, is my uh, and we were gonna start kind of um, oldest to, to youngest, if that's all right. So. Um, I don't know if um, if my dad is here, and if he yeah, wants to... but I think he's. Uh, I think the audio is not connected. Let me look. Okay. Dad, are you out there? Can you hear us? You might need to unmute it. Yes. Marianne. Did you find him? Uh, he's with mm, on moms. Should be Marianne. I don't see them anymore. No, that's uh Nicholas Robinson. Who's Nicholas? I remember her. I don't. Maybe one of John's kids or Jimmy. Uh, no, one of Jimmy's kids. I'm one of Jimmy's sons. Oh, okay. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so, um, while I figure out uh, with while we figure out with uh, my dad on the on the oh. side about how to get him connected, um, maybe uh, Leon, are you here, Uncle Leon? Yes, I am. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna. Where's anything? Put your mute on. It is. It's okay. I guess it's my turn. Huh? So I want to say hello to everybody and thank you all for, uh, you know, signing on. And um, I guess, you know, I'm just going to miss all three of them quite a bit. You know, I kind of got a loss for words, you know. I'm just kind of kind of out, so you can pass it on to the next person. You know, <clears throat> All right. So, it Uncle Sam. Yeah, I just want to say hello to everyone and thank everyone for uh, signing on. Um. I'm gonna miss Sharon quite a bit. Um, we had a lot of good times together growing up. She hung with us pretty tough. <laughs> Through a lot of, she, we would get in trouble, she'd get in trouble right along with us. <laughs> so, you know, I, I know I'm gonna miss her quite a bit and John as well and George uh, will all be missed. and. Uh, And I just want to let them know I, I, I love them so. And that's it for me right now. 
Thank you. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, Mom, could you put dad on? Yes. Okay, great. Okay, take it. Say something. Hello. Yeah, every, everybody can see you, Dad. You got anything you want to say? Hey, Jim. Uncle Jimmy. 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 So talk, Jimmy. Talk about Sherry. What, what, what's up? What's going on? You tell us. I'm just listening. Tell, you, tell them listening. about your memories of Sharon. My memories of Sharon? How far you want me to go back? As far as you want. How far you want to go back? As far as you can Changing go. Diapers. Huh? Changing her diapers. Well, yeah, that's a lot of diapers. I changed all of the diapers, even yours, Sam. <laughs> huh? The milk drinker. Just like you drink coffee, right? That's how you drop my milk. I couldn't have no for my cereal. <laughs> okay. That was a lot of diapers. For Sharon. A lot of diapers. What about the story about Aaron sitting on your dad's lap at the table? Oh, yeah, the princess. Yeah. You know, we wouldn't have to talk dinner time at the table. So if we got caught, talking, you know, that was a big one. But when she was born, she'd sit on Beth's lap and her finger point at us. She and Leon talking over there. So, you know, she always was a princess and she'll always be a princess. You know? She was special. Well, what can I say? She's, uh, she was true. And then she got her way, just like all of us, huh? John, Tad, George. And Willie, okay? So she's Jamal and Grandma, both grandmas. Yeah, mops moms, J.D., Sam, Uncle Sam, okay, so I guess it's been a good movie of them, you know? so what can I say? It's talking that time. <laughs> you have more to say? No, I have much more to say, but in the day, I'm right. all. Hello? Oh, thanks, Dad. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay, good. You know, yeah, this, I just want to say that um, such a wonderful sister and brothers I had the opportunity to have. Yeah. Learned a lot from everyone. Yeah. Such a sad occasion, but also a very joyous one. Seeing everybody united in this strength. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That's all I have to say. Thank you, thank you, Uncle Steve. Um, so, so now we want to, for the rest of the time, really, we want to open it up to, to everybody else, other uh, friends and family. But I do see I have a hand raised, so I think Douglas, are you interested in saying some? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, thanks. Um, I met Sharon. I don't recall how long ago, but. Um, I met her outside of East Bay Church, and she had that blue Volkswagen Beetle with the with the with the 
bike rack on top. And I went over and said hi and said, you ride bikes, of course, um, <laughs> rhetorical question. She said, sure. And um, said, where are you riding? She said, well, I'm going this afternoon. Want to go? And I was like, okay. Um, I didn't go, but we exchanged numbers. And um, that was the beginning of a friendship. And that um, was like a gift from God, you know, for me. I, when, when she told me what was going on, I, I felt I felt really cheated. And But then I said, if, if God really wanted to cheat me, I would have never met Sharon. Um, so I just want to let everybody know that she was like a sister to me, a prayer partner. And um, unlike any woman I've ever met um, in my life, she's, you know, she's just well-rounded, well-balanced, um, you know, very spiritually minded sister. And um, I'm going to miss her. Um, I'm going to miss, you know, the person I'd go visit when I went to San Leandro and our calls and conversations. And so I just um, hope in some way that Sharon's life uh, has has somehow seeped into everyone on this call's heart and that they're able to just to keep some pieces of her, just a small piece of her. And, and if so, you'll be really um, a better person. So um, that's, you know, what I wanted to say and just remembering Sharon. So thank you for letting me uh, share. Um, <clears throat> some, some people are sending me messages and raising their hands. So I'll, I'll do my best to call on people. Uh, Lynette? Yes, I'm here. Jenna, thank you for that wonderful video. That was wonderful. I feel like I know your whole family now. Um, and my name is Lynette Hall and I'm from Mills College and it's my privilege as a member of the Alumni of Color Committee of the Endowed Scholarship of President Alicia DeCudro to share thoughts about our amazing Sharon Robinson. Uh, Sharon was our inaugural undergraduate awardee for the prestigious Mills College Alumni of Color Scholarship in honor of President DeCudro. Sharon's exceptional studies led her to being the second awardee for the Alumni of Color Scholarship, completing her Mills graduate studies, a Mills master's in public policy. She joined us as a transfer student in 2012. The Alumni of Color Scholarship is an important financial resource for students of color at Mills. Sharon thinks of her mom. Students like my mom, a high school graduate, are unable to financially burden their families with the expense of funding a college education. More importantly, this AOCC scholarship comes with branches, connecting students of color with a community of amazing and fun elders who willingly support and guide us with a laugh whenever needed. To understand how important the scholarship was to Sharon, she shares a bit of her family history with us. As a child of parents who grew up in the segregated South, I had another narrative about American life. My mom graduated from an integrated high school with grades that earned her class valedictorian. However, she was not. That prestigious title was given to a Caucasian female student who had achieved the honor, who had not, excuse me, had not achieved the honor. Another story my mom shared was why she hadn't pursued a higher education. Even when she was recruited for college, she didn't want the financial responsibility to burden her family, so she didn't attend. I often wonder how her decision changed her life. My parents, especially my mom, had a desire to be a lifelong learner and inspired the fire that burned in my spirit, which allowed me to complete my college degree at a later stage in life. In fact, when she was alive, I often told her that I went back to school for both of us. And, but on a personal note right now, I just wanna talk a little bit about um, Sharon who always showed up for us. Everything we ever asked her to do as a recipient, we were so proud of her. She was our ambassador, uh, whether it was a, a meet and greet 
or um, a cocktail party, a reception, a Q&A, whatever it was, a fundraiser, she always came. She was always our beacon of light. And I think one of my best stories, well, two, if I can, one story that I remember, she always used to say that an investment to the scholarship at Mills is an investment in a student, just like it is an investment in stock. You are investing in a student, which I, I've heard her say more than once. And there's an, another great time when Sharon was introduced to uh, a board member at Mills and a major donor before our fundraising event. And they had one conversation and the evening went on. And because of that conversation, and this major donor's passion for Mills and for Sharon's words, we raised $19,000 in one evening. And that was just like a record for, for fundraising for us. And we're, we're really, really proud of her. And um, the Alumni of Color Committee at Mills today on January 17th celebrates the life of Sharon and all of her exemplary contributions to Mills and to her community. We love her. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I have uh, Sheila, then Sharon, and then James. Sheila, yeah. Hi. Hi, yes, I'm Sheila. And um, I'm a friend of Sharon's. And I met Sharon when we were in junior high school. And um, we attended high school together and that's when we hung out together for the next three years LA from la high school and but sharon she completed high school in two years and a half so a half a semester she was gone and also she was also in um student body while she was in in uh, high school and i remember when sharon left the half a semester early she had a, um, since she was in student body, they gave her a free lunch pass. And she gave it to me and told me she wanted me to have it for the rest of the semester since I was there. But when she left the, the early semester, she didn't say exactly what she was gonna do. And I found out that she hadn't even planned on going to college. And I said, girl, you gotta go to college. And I had, um signed up to go to Northridge and so she applied to go to Northridge so a week before we started high school I mean Northridge that year she came along and she was in went to college at Cal State Northridge we went we attended Cal State Northridge and then um she she was there for a year I think it was a year or a half a year and um when she started, when we went to college that year, we both were living at home in LA and Northridge is in, I mean, Cal State Northridge is out in Northridge. And she drove her brand, her parents' brand new Cadillac <laughs> back and forth to school every day. And I rode along with her. And then eventually she met um, um, Carlton and was one of her loves. And um, she left. She left. Uh, oh, yeah. My husband is reminding me some of the things I'm forgetting. But at that December, instead of driving a Cadillac, her parents gave her a Mustang, and that was the first year they had those gorgeous Mustangs that came out. And she, so she received that, and she was she was riding back and forth for that. But she finished, and so she left. And when, I don't know if you follow me, but she left and Northridge, and she moved to um, Oakland. And so, but we, we, we continue to stay in contact. And she was in my wedding. She was my maid of honor. And she came down and we had a beautiful time. And I have two children and she, she met both of them and they know, their, know her and love her and everything. And she's gonna be, she's gonna be, Oh, miss, because I met her and I just, oh, you were in her wedding. and I was also in her wedding and I love Sharon so much. She called me on our, she's what, three or four days older than I am. 
We both were born in November. She called me this year when we both were turning 64 years old and she wished me a happy birthday. And I am, a, I guess I have lupus and I'm a cancer survivor. And she's aware of that. And I was going through my uh, chemo and she told me, I'm sorry, the chemo is not faring well with me. But anyway, oh, sorry, yeah. we had a beautiful relationship and I am, she is going to be okay. so uh -huh. And thank you for allowing me to share my feelings and my love for sharing. Thank you, Sheila. Nice to put a face to the name and the voice. <laughs> And also, I know Steve, <laughs> one of the brothers that was a friend. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I see the had sight in a long time. Years have gone. <laughs> yes, yes. And I have two gorgeous babies, and my husband sitting here. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Hi. yes, yes. Nice it's my, my husband, it's my daughter, and my son. Yeah. Come in. It's my yeah. <laughs> she reminds me so much of Sharon. Oh, yeah, she was your best friend. Yes, yes, she looks so much like Sharon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice to see you, Chica. Yes, 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 yes. Steve. Well, Steve mainly. Michael, I knew also, but it was Steve because you, you come after Sharon. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nice seeing you. Uh, it's a sad occasion, but nice to see you. Thank you, Sheila. Yes. Good to see you, Sheila. James. Yeah, yeah nice. James, did you want to speak? I see your hand raised. Oh. Sorry, can you hear me? Hello. Can anyone hear uh, me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Sorry, the reception in the office is bad. Um, I, I can't believe that I'm actually, <laughs> this is for Sharon. Um, I work for the city of Oakland. My name is James Cook and Sharon was my boss. Um, the first time that I met Sharon, we, were at a event uh, celebrating yeah. at the Garden Center. And I didn't know who she was. Um, I didn't know who she was. And she come up to me and she was like, hi, how are you? And I was just like, I'm good, how are you? And we just began to chat and she walked away. And I was like, who is this sister? Like, I need to know who she is. It was something about her energy that just like bounced into me. And I was like, who is this lady? I don't know who she is, but she makes me want to be a better person. And I'm not even a bad person, but she just makes me want to be a better person. I just love her energy. Come to find out two months later, she was going to be my boss. And I was like, oh my God, like, God, you heard my prayer. Um, the absolute best boss I've ever had in my entire life. Her spirit, her smile, her gentle touch. The few times that we hugged before COVID, um, just electrifying and didn't really know what was going on with Sharon. She, she didn't really disclose or at least she didn't disclose to uh, me or another coworker, but I was just like, man, there's something going on. And I just, you know, I would pray and she never wanted oh. to talk about it, but you know, I would go to her and I would put my hand on her shoulder. And I'm like, Sharon, it's gonna be okay. We got this. And she would just laugh and she's like, yeah, it's gonna be fine. Um, and I, 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 I'm in shock, I'm in awe, I'm in disbelief. Um, I, this is just one.
Hey James, I, I think he froze. He, did he did, did James's video freeze for other people? Okay. <laughs> okay, James. Um, if you, uh, we can come back to you in a little bit if that is better. But I know Rock Mom wanted to say something too, and I and then I see. Um, sure. Yeah, Daryl, I'll see you. So after Rock Mom show. Um, yeah, we've all lost an amazing person, artistic, athletic, spiritual, learned, political, caring. I've lost a life partner. Uh, she was far beyond anyone that I ever imagined being with. And that, that's all I can say. Okay, I guess I can speak. Uh, can everybody hear me? Okay, I'm uh, Cheryl Barnes and my sister is Paulette Lockhart. Um, and she and Sharon has been friends and we all have actually all been friends since uh, junior high school. And they're like two years older than I am. So I could always remember when we were at Fauche Junior High School, I used to think Sharon was just so pretty. You know, she was just so gorgeous. But uh, again, we've been knowing each other since uh, junior high school and we've always kept in contact. And uh, we just want to tell the whole family that you all have our sympathies and our we're praying for your families. And if there's anything you all need, we're we're here for you all. Thank you. Why are you sitting there? Okay, all right. Yeah, I was just talking to Paul. I just muted myself. No, you didn't, Reggie. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I hear you talking to my dad. <laughs> okay, Ro I see Robert wants to uh, to say something. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes, yes I can hear you. My name is Robert Watts. I'm a, a friend of Rockman and Sharon's. And um, I've known Sharon for, Jesus, 20 plus years. And we identified each other as brother and sister. And um, I like the other speaker, I'm a cancer survivor. And I met Sharon shortly after my lymphoma bout. So, um, um, you know, I'm just, I'm a little traumatized by all of this and um, kind of uh, reflecting on my friendship. Anytime she'd call me, she would say, hey, hey brother, what's happening? I said, what's up, sis? You know? And we were at until hours for hours. Uh, and I remember when she first met Rockman, who I think the world loved as well. These are, I told her, I said, that's a class act. You know, you got a good one there. So <laughs> she said, uh, I guess Rockman's like, was that my competition? You know, she said, no, that's my brother. <laughs> so you know, I, I hope Rockman can still, that's hearing me because uh, that's my brother. So, you know, they came down to my home and spent a whole weekend one summer and we drove up to Yosemite National Park and hung out and I cooked for them and we swam and took hot tubs and uh, talked through the night and uh, uh, really loved her. I have two other sisters, but uh, Sharon is as every much a sister to me as they are. And uh, I only I only regret that I didn't take her up on the opportunities to come down to LA to meet the rest of her family. She spoke so, so passionately about her sisters and brothers and her parents. So I feel like I know them. And all I can say to you all is that uh, if there's anything I can do, if you ever need to call me, talk to me about anything, uh, that includes you, Rockman, uh, I'm here. and. Uh, uh, I know she can hear me because the power of that spirit is indomitable and uh, it's infinite. So Sharon, love you. 
and all these people have congregated to share the energy that you put into us. So love you. Safe travels. Thank you, Robert. And it's good to see you. You too. It's good to meet you finally, <laughs> visually. <laughs> you too, Heather. I, I just want to say something. Um, it's all the stories, um, many of them I've, I've heard, had the privilege of hearing before, but, and some new, um, just amazes me how Aunt Sharon was able to touch so many people um, individually remembering everything that was going on in their lives, you know, and even in her illness, I, I mean, I, it, I was privileged to, to be with her in the highs and the lows. And, um, and I know till the very end, she was always thinking about other people and the, how Sheila shared, she called her before her birthday and she always remembered birthdays. Um, I, I've never had a birthday go by that Aunt Sharon did not call me and send me a card um, or even try to make it down to celebrate with me. And um, she knew how to make environments better. You know, she, she knew how to, to bring the happy and, um, and get people to think higher, think better, think more positively. And so uh, we're all very blessed to have known her and to have deposited her in our hearts to hold on to that we can, you know, call back on those those memories and those emotions that she stirs in us. Yeah. And uh, where are you? I'm down here. Hi, Reggie. <laughs> But uh, she wanted us to have uh, uh, to celebrate her and to and to um, have a happy happy time. One of the things she continued to stress to me is no doom and gloom. I just want I want I want joy. I want love. I want uh, positive vibes. And so I think we're all giving her that. And and that's the best that we can do for her now is to just carry on her legacy of love and joy and kindness. And, and fortitude, I mean, she was, she, when she felt something about something, she, she meant it. <laughs> so um, standing for what you believe in and, um, and pursuing that which is on your heart. That's all I got. I wanted to say um, something about Sharon. My name is Carmela Chase and I have, I was uh, very fortunate to work with her the last few years. And um, one of the, the biggest things that I'm gonna take away is definitely her strength through kindness. And I, I've, I learned a lot through watching her interact and um, and really lead with strength and kindness. Um, alongside that kindness, and I'm so glad to see her family members because Sharon was competitive. If you were in a race with her, she was going to be on on point and she wanted the rules to be clear and she was down for a game. So, so one of the things that I loved about her was that she was also super kind, but in a race, she was down to win. So I love Shan. I love her. Thank you. Yeah, I, I thank you for saying that. I, I want to kind of echo that. I think she, one of the things I'm, well, a couple of things I'm taking away. I'm, I'm so glad I, I moved to the Bay Area like three years ago to, and ended up actually having a closer relationship with my aunt. I don't feel like I knew her as well as a kid. And, and now I feel like really blessed that I get to. I mean, it, it hurts a little, you know, it hurts a lot to also now, you know, not have her around, but I, I, I feel really blessed. Um, and I, the main, one of the main things is, is how much she did push herself and everybody around her to be excellent, to be better, to be their 
best selves for themselves, like, yeah, for the community, but I, she, I got into running and she was like, oh, let's do a race. And then we did a race together. And then I, when I was, when I saw her uh, about a month or so ago, I was telling her I was, you know, training some more and, and maybe, you know, hoping to do a marathon. And she's like, okay, well, when are you going to do your next triathlon? And I'm like, dang, like, <laughs> I haven't even done that yet. And I don't know, she just, yeah, was really competitive and, and pushing everybody around her to, to do that. Not, not more than you could handle, you know, maybe I think uh, she believed in you you know, and, and, and made sure you believed in yourself. And I, I similarly want to, if I am, have an ounce of the strength and wonderfulness that, that my aunt had, like, what an amazing person I would be. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm taking so much and I'm, I'm taking how, how many people are here today, I think is really, such a testament to how special she was or is how special she is <clears throat> i think that's it that's all on my heart right now um i know reggie wanted to say something too yes can you hear me yeah Wait, did you get muted? Wait, now I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry about the uh, technology problems, but uh, I'm trying to get up on all this technology. I'll get there. But uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I was Sharon's neighbor since I was born. I was born in 1956, just like she was. And she's my sister from another mister. And my Sister Janice uh, wanted to say that uh, she remembers Sharon with all her dolls in her room. And so I don't know if, those, if, if the family still has all her dolls, but uh, her, her room was, was layered with dolls. And then uh, one of the things that I remember about Sharon, and we were the same age, of course, and of course, you know, I wanted to, you know, show her the ropes, but she had a lot of brothers to show her the ropes. And me and Sharon got into a, a, one fight one day and when I got up, I said, I swore that I will never do that again. So, like you said, she was a competitor, <laughs> definitely. So um, we're, we all miss her and uh, just the talks and just her, her positive vibe. You know, we just, just loved, loved her. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Okay. I'll mute myself now. <laughs> uh, uh, Sharon, Sharon Clegg, and then and I see your hand, Joseph, after Sharon. Hi, my name is Sharon Clegg. I met Sharon at Mills College in 2012 at orientation. Um, it was her, myself, and another girl named Jamila. And when we all met together, it was like, we're going to be sisters. I mean, really sisters. We're going to make sure that we all make it through. She was so encouraging and so uplifting. And from that day, we had been really close. We went to the water. We went to the, I'm going to say the ocean. We went to Moon Bay a lot. We did a lot of spa days at her house, Jamila's house. Um, we did a lot of studying together. When we all had people in our families transition, Sharon was the rock. She was always there. No matter what you were going through, she always encouraged you. And I didn't even know that she was, she came to my mother's um, funeral uh, because she said she didn't even know if she was gonna be able to make it. And that was in uh, 2019. But Sharon showed up, and when I mean showing up, it's like she showed up and she showed me so much love. And with that, I was so, I'm always grateful for Sharon because from the time I met her, I just loved her and we've been sisters. 
and um, she made this beautiful video at my mother's funeral and I was just really so grateful. And she told, she told my husband, she said, if Sharon needs anything, please let me know because I'm going to be there. And for me, if Sharon needed anything, I was going to be there. And she talked about her family and Heather, the book that you wrote. Uh, one of you guys are authors and I have your book and it's amazing. And she talked about all her brothers and her nieces and her mother. And I, when she was going through her, um, I'm gonna say her life journey with her mother when her mother got sick, I was, we were all praying and we were, when, we were at school and we went into a uh, room and it was her, myself and Jamila, and we just prayed and cried together. And we, whatever your needs were, she was always there. And I'm gonna miss her. There is a void in my heart for her. And when she, when um, Jamila transitioned in 2017, it was me and Sharon there. And when Jamila husband transitioned, it was me and Sharon there. That was a picture of a group of us with our professor and four of our other students with us. She was just so amazing. And mm -hmm. you always wanted to do better. You always wanted to learn better and just love on people when they need you. And even when they don't need you. And I'm going to miss that from her. Just her love and her spirit and her kindness, and she was amazing. And I just thank God that he brought her into my life to make me a better person. Thank you for allowing me to speak. And family, I already feel like I already know you because she talked about you guys so much and she loved you so much. So thank you so much for sharing, sharing with me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Joseph, Joe. Oh, okay. Good evening. Uh, Sharon and I, I met Sharon a long time ago, back the whole family. And uh, we got together and we had good times, my wife and I and some family members. We used to travel out every year when, we, when you would have the uh, family picnic and we would be a part of it, and cooking and sharing our love to the rest of the family. And that was a great time that we enjoyed being together. And we would come out every year when you have the family gathering and we have a big picnic and everything in the park. It started from Pops. It started from Pops. Uh, when he died. When he, before he died, uh, I used to come out to be with Pops and Ruby, and Pops would always meet me at the hotel and give me his car, and I would have transportation, so I didn't have to worry about getting around. And one day we came out there, and no sooner we got out the airport, left the airport and got to the hotel, Pops showed up, say, are you tired? I said, no. He said, let's go for a ride. I said, okay, so we went by Jet Easy. He was not at home. So he said, well, we go see Sharon. I didn't know where Sharon lived, but we traveled all the way to Oakland to see Sharon. We spent the night up there and the next day when Sharon got off of work, we spent some hours with her and came back to LA. And when I got back to LA, my wife was waiting on me. So we had to fly back to Vegas. But after that, time after time, Sharon was my contact for the Robinson family. And I loved her, the whole family here in Chicago. We loved her. We loved her very much. And uh, that was my, there she is. I'm not, not only her Sharon, but George, John, and Sharon. Got a chance to meet them all and spend some time with them. He's my first cousin and I always enjoyed him. Thank you. Thank you. Patricia? Yep. Hi, family. This is Patricia in St. Louis. Um, it's so nice to see all of you all. I'm sorry about the circumstances. 
I just wanted to share some fond memories of Sharon. Um, we met her, Ken and I met her um, shortly after we got married and we went out to visit her because we went to San Francisco and I had heard that I had relatives out there from a Ruby side of the family, had never met anybody from that side of the family. And so we looked Sharon up and it was like, we had always known each other. She was so welcoming and had such an open heart, welcomed us into her home, took the time to show us around, took us all over town. We rode the bark for the first time. I was scared because I thought I was gonna drown under the bay, <laughs> but we had such a wonderful time. Um, and even though we didn't keep touch, touch base a lot, every time we touched base, it was like time had not passed by. So Sharon always had a wonderful, kind spirit, just like everybody has said, she was good hearted, um, just very sweet person. Um, she was a person who, and she and my husband hit it off right off the bat because we couldn't figure out what to call him. So she coined the phrase Ken Bob. She started calling my husband Ken Bob, and now people in the family elsewhere are calling him Ken Bob, but she was the first person in the family to call him that. Um, but we were great friends, great buds. Um, I totally will miss her, her wonderful smile, that great laugh, um, that wonderful spirit, and how she would always say, that's cool, that's cool. And it was just her way of just being centered and calm and nothing would ever face her. So that's one of the things that I will truly miss about her. Um, love to you all. I hope that we can all keep in touch. Love you. Love you back, Pat. Uh, Carol? Thank you. Hi, I'm Carol Chetkovich. Um, <clears throat> I knew Sharon as a student at, when I was a uh, teacher at Mills, and she was my student and also my advisee for a number of years. And I've been thinking about <clears throat> what I could possibly add to the conversation. I, I just echo what so many other people have said, but I guess add that um, knowing her as a student was an enormous pleasure. Um, she was, she just brought so much um, to every, discussion to every encounter. Very smart, uh, hardworking, extremely thoughtful, um, just a delight to know. And I was trying to think of how I would describe what the most powerful thing to me about her was. As a teacher, you become very aware of the effect of the presence, the quality of the presence of particular students in any gathering. And Sharon was someone who emanated a kind of grace. And that was something that really would affect everyone else in a group that she was part of. And that was just a real gift and a real pleasure for me to experience in the student. And I just wanna say, I'm, I'm so sorry um, that we've lost her. Um, clearly she lived an enormously loving and um, full life, if not long, as long as it should have been. Um, but it was a great, great pleasure to have known her. Thank you. Thank you for that. I echo your sentiment, Jenna. That is really cool to hear about her as a boss, friend, student, mentor, cousin, sister. <laughs> Yeah, when, when can you ever hear about her as a student? I know, right? I was just like, that's a privilege there. Totally. There's uh, another person, Ch 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 Chayo? Chayo? Sorry if I'm pronouncing your wrong no. name wrong. Yeah, Chayo's fine. I'm all choked up. I'm sorry, y'all. And that's why I kept trying to hold back on sharing because I'm such an ugly crier. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it's gonna be hella ugly, y'all, but I gotta speak my truth and express my love for Sharon. Um, I met her through meditation and I knew I would see Sharon at least once a week for sure. I don't know how many years it's been. Um, I just knew that just the sweetness of her presence, the generosity, um, just coming at you with nothing but heart. Um, 
And, you know, the process we would do is pretty intense, as beautiful as it is, you know, sometimes after you're done, a lot of things are moving. So it'd be times where I was like, man, I'm gonna just get up out of here, go home, I'm hungry. It's like 7 p.m. Like I don't got time for, you know, but Sharon always made sure to be like, hey, Chayo, how's it going? <laughs> and I was like, she always found a way to, to bring me back, be present, check in, and that love and that light. And um, that was hilarious, Patricia. You're like, that's cool. I remember that so vividly that's cool Chayo yeah and asking me about what was going on with me in such a way that it was so authentic you know like when she asked how are you she really meant like how are you um and I just I'm so I feel so blessed and grateful that I had a friend you know Sharon it's not like we like kicked it we met up and you know but those brief moments were so precious because she conveyed so much love and beauty and just those short gazes, you know, and her smile and that tooth. I remember just such a sweet little smile and I'm gonna miss her so much. I was looking forward to being able to see her at, um, you know, our weekly practice, but I honestly feel her more than I ever did, you know? And that just says a lot about the power of love and spirit and the light that she is. And I'm so grateful because we would check in and she would say how she was in uh, LA or gonna go see the family or just got back from seeing the family. And we would always vibe on that, that family love. Um, so I'm just super, more than anything, um, grateful to be allowed to be part of this with you guys. And, you know, just big up to Sharon. And I love the music, yeah, that reggae, that those songs were so like, I could feel her there with us dancing and grooving and smiling. Um, so I just wanna send love and blessings to everyone and thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pat, Pat Baxter, go ahead. Yeah, my name wasn't, er, let me see. Okay, there I am. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Pat Baxter here in Oakland. And um, wow, let me just say, Sharon is one of the most authentic people that I've ever met. You know, she never, it was never anything about her where something occurred and you say, I got to stick it in my back pocket so I can remember this. Sharon was always just Sharon. And I met her a little over 20 years ago at a solstice. And I can't remember if it was winter or summer solstice that we were celebrating, but she was drumming. And her spirit just came out and we saw that we had a lot in common, be it from our eating habits and, you know, <laughs> going to the same, um, uh, grocery stores and then run into each other at Whole Foods and all of that, but also some of the things that we enjoyed. And one was cycling, but someone mentioned the fact that Sharon was very competitive. So I was new to cycling and Sharon was that female that was going to push me to that next level. So <laughs> she was the one that, um, has, that took me on probably two of my favorite rides today for the first time. And if I have any cyclists on this, you know, um, Zoom call, they know Tunnel Road and they know Cold Canyon. Not easy rides, but Sharon was gonna make sure that um, another female was gonna be able to keep up with her and so forth. So I thank her for that. And even I would say that she was still showing up most recently because um, as you know, Sharon's a hiker and I would always say to her, you know, I wanna hike with you. I wanna go out hiking. And she, um, but I never had an opportunity to do it. And over the last few months, I actually met one of her really good friends hiking. So we've been hiking together. And I know that was Sharon putting that together because she was at that point um, not able to hike and I just thank her for that. And I'm just so thankful that we had an opportunity to pray and treat together. Um, 
in the last few months. And I just really appreciate her just such positive and her willingness um, to believe. Um, so I know she is still here. And in fact, um, when I got the word of her transition, I was away spending time at the ocean and I had my bike with me. And I normally, when somebody makes a transition, I like to release them, but I wait a little while. I feel like they kind of, they're kind of in the middle or something, but it was that same day and I had planned a ride. So I went ahead and did this ride for Sharon and it was just phenomenal. It, it was almost like I felt her dancing on the ocean. And it said to me that she's happy. She was ready and it's all good. So I just wanna give my condolences to the family as well as just sending out a consciousness of comfort at this time. And um, just love Sharon and know that um, her spirit will always be here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, go ahead, Sandra. <laughs> yeah, hi, everyone. I just wanted to say um, how, well, even thinking about Sharon now, boy, I just can hear her laughter and, and see her smile. She started working with, um, you know, me and our group with the city, um, maybe it was August, September, 2018. And on a daily basis, we would just, um, be dealing with a lot of stress, but she was um, somebody who just, she had this gift uh, of her own just bright spirit. And she was so committed to the work, but she just was so relational with everybody. So everybody loves Sharon. Um, but I get to laugh with her on a daily basis and she really made life um, bear bearable in a lot of ways. She was such a gift and I still feel, feel like just thinking about her and I thank you all to for sharing so much about her life that I did not know that she was the only only daughter in that beautiful family or that all of the ways that she um, you know just live life to the fullest I, I didn't know all of that I just knew that she was a gift and she continues to be a gift to me um, uh, to our uh, to our whole group by virtue of her spirit and, and I think her grace and um, uh, just being being a light. Um, so I enjoyed every moment of, of spending time with her and I thank you all and my, my condolences as well to all of her family and friends. Next, I guess. Gonna help me out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. All right, hello everybody. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Um, I'm Stephen Jr., son of Stephen Robinson, senior. You know, the baby of the the brothers. I just wanted to say, man, this is this is real wonderful that everybody came together. I learned so much just in this uh, this gathering of love for unsharing. And uh, man, this is just amazing. And I was, uh, was talking to my sister because I was trying to debate when I was going to get in this group chat and say something. And she told me, don't be scared. So I just jumped in here. And that's something I'm sharing would have done. Just go ahead and tackle it. And um, yeah, I'm a Scorpio too, you know, and uh, it's just good. I've been scrolling through, seeing everybody, the wonderful faces on here, people that I don't know, people I know, haven't seen in a long time. And um, yeah, this is great. And um, I just want to say, uh, you know, uh, Sharon really, she left her mark. She's still here with us, you know, she's here with us every day. And it's, it's, it's so amazing how we just came together like this. And uh 
Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And I just want to say hello to everybody. And uh, it's really good to see you all. Yeah, cousin. So Jenna, are there any other uh, people who want to speak? Um, Taylor wants to do something um, towards the the end, whenever that will be. But um, I guess now's the invitation. If anybody else wants to speak, if you you can go ahead and unmute yourself, or you know, send us a message. Um, I guess I'll uh, I'll say something. Um, my name is Drew Robinson. Um, and I, it's this has been a really hard time for me to process my aunt passing, our aunt, our family member passing. Cause it's crazy. She was always that person who was so present, who was so powerful, who was so loved. And I don't know, she was uh, one of those people who can change, who can pull you out of your darkness. She'd sit in you with it and talk with you about it. And she always brought some light to it. And now the biggest thing that's been helping me heal through this grieving process is all the lessons I learned, all that light she shed. And it's funny because I catch myself in certain moments, a lot of the speech and the way I've naturally changed over time is all the stuff I was too stubborn to listen to her on. And she always knew I was so stubborn, but she still bear with me on it. And that was one thing about it that we've all said, you know, is she'd be there for you. She was always present and she'd challenge you on it. She'd make you really think about what it is, you know, in terms of your higher self. And for that, I'm always eternally grateful. And it's been this weird process of highs and lows, but yeah. Um, someone said it's funny because she feels more present than she ever has. And I totally agree. And I'm just, you know, I'm just really grateful for this moment. And as Steven said, all the all the things, like I learned just so much and all those images too, like, man, it just honestly, it was so healing. So thank you, Jenna. Thank you, Heather. Thank you to the rest of the family. I really appreciate y'all. Thank you, Drew. Wow. Love that. Be your higher self, man, in her honor. Um, hello. Um, uh, hi. Um, my name's Nicholas Robinson. I am um, one of the sons of Jimmy Robinson, the oldest brother. Um, just like hearing Stephen and Andrew talk and seeing like all of the pictures of us with Sharon was just, you know, very touching. Um, and of course, all of us are going to really miss her. Um, some of the fond memories that I have of her, um, one of the last conversations I had with her actually, um, I was working on the Disney cruise ship and I couldn't, I haven't been able to see a lot of my family. And um, I told her, she had called me and told me that she was diagnosed with cancer. And I was like, you know what you need? You need to come on a Disney cruise. It's gonna make it all better. It's just gonna make it better. You need some magic. And she was like, yeah. I I do need some magic. I do need some magic right now. And unfortunately, of course, um, things were moving a little bit faster, so she wasn't able to come visit. Um, but I mean, lots of uh, magic and support to her. Um, and I don't know, I, I am definitely not great with words, but um, I don't know, just seeing all of those pictures today just it was very touching thank you jenna for all of that thank you hey nick you remember how she used to make us sing at the family yeah meeting? that's that's the other thing i was just about to bring up like i don't know i guess growing growing up i i didn't really feel like i fit in because i was I don't know, I just didn't feel like I fit in. And she would always be like, hey, what are you doing over there? Like, why don't you come over and sing on the karaoke? 
And I was like, I don't know if I want to sing. Like, I, I feel embarrassed. And she'd be like, no, come on, like, come sing. Like, you, you have a great voice. Like, let's sing together. Let's sing something together. Um, she was always very, very supportive of me. And I even remember her bringing people to come see some of my shows. Um, she was always an incredible support system to me. And I will always cherish that. Thank you. Am I, am I on mute? Am I off mute? You are off mute. Who, I don't know who's speaking. I'm Quinn Gardner. And uh, cousin, uh, actually, my uncle Joe Ryan would invite us to the picnics uh, for a number of years. We, uh, my wife and I, I urged even her mom and dad from Georgia would come out to the picnics and just a loving, sharing, giving family extension of Sharon. First of all, I give honor and glory to God that we're all here and uh, together tribute, uh, celebration of life. And I want you guys to stay safe and, and, and uh, trying to stay safe and well from the COVID. But as I uh, reflect, uh, just to, as everything everyone has said, from what I, with every picnic at gathering, uh, just a warm, loving person, organizer, uh, leader, woman of strength, woman of character, woman of grace, woman of beauty. Um, and I remember her smile. Uh, just a, a delight to be around. Yes, it was a blessing to be around her. And we're all, we're all blessed for having it pass our way. This is Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Frank. Well, thank you. Thank you, guys. It was wonderful, wonderful service. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Oh, what a blessing it is for all of us to get together at this gracious time. Um, I just wanted to interject one thing. Uh, this is Paula Ferguson, Michael Robinson's wife. Can you hear me, Heather? Yes, I can. Hi, Aunt Paula. Hi. Um, her spirit just ran through me. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna speak, I'm gonna speak. Um, but what, I, I mean, there's so many things we could say. I mean, when I came into this family, ooh, so many years ago, all your generation wasn't just a P in the eye. And so now I look at it and I'm so grateful and so thankful. I was so busy doing my thing. And then Cheyenne came about and it seems like all the brothers had children. Boom, 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 boom. And I remember in the kitchen, we were, Ms. Sharon and I were speaking and uh, I looked at her and I said, so what's taking you so long? She says, well, and I was talking about education because you know, you all talk about me like I'm the education auntie, okay. But I talked to her about it also. I said, what, what are you waiting for? What's going on? Well, I don't know. And I said, you need to do it because we need to implant education and doing what our heart tells us to do in this generation coming up. And so she decided to go. And I was so proud of her, so very proud of her because what she did was just not inspire herself. She inspired the Robinson generation. I'm so happy, you have no idea that you guys have moved forward, you've captured your heart, you're true to yourself, and you're proud of it. And so I hope that it will continue. As I've told you, Heather, you guys, Jenna, you guys got to get that family picnic going back again, because it's your turn. She did it. It's your turn now. And we'll sit back with our chairs and laugh at what you guys do. <laughs> and the ne next generation will crop up. But I wanted to say, that it was that conversation in the kitchen where I challenged Sharon. And yes, it was always a race and it was always, what are you doing? What are you doing? But for her going back to school, she was not, a, she, she didn't want to do it. I said, no, you can do it. You, I'm too old. You're not too old. Get it. And when she got her master's, I just thanked the Lord. And I, and you know, Heather, I've been talking, I always talk to you about finishing yours. All of you. I'm so proud of all of you. 
I finished mine. What you I know about? you did. I said, I'm proud you wouldn't got yours, but where was a moment you didn't? You remember? We had those conversations. Yeah. So I have tried to do it with all of you because I've tried to do it with Cheyenne. It's a feat, but you got it. And Nicholas, you're so handsome. Yes, he is. You are so handsome, Nicholas. I'm so proud of you, really. Hi, Nikki. We haven't been able to see you and talk to you, but yes, we're very, very proud of you. And everyone else who came, I was just so wonderful when I saw 100 participants. And that didn't even, didn't even cover the people who were attached, like Shai and I and Michael were all on one hood. So right. it goes to speak to a person who was able to be herself, to free herself, to be happy in her skin, and to share that with a generation. Because I don't know if you guys know, but she went around to all of you. She was, I was the bad cop, she was the good cop. And we were all talking education. I don't know if you noticed it or not, but we always talked who's doing what. So um, you guys have got to keep that going, okay? And blessings to you. Her spirit is happy and free. And Rock Mound, you know you can reach out to me anytime. And, um, thank you. and uh, I've been praying for you, my brother. And um, all of you, thank you for being here. And I'm just, uh, you know, a sister-in-law. And uh, I, <laughs> well, you know, you got those Robinson and me, but thank you all. Bye-bye. <laughs> Love to hear from you. It's great. I got it. I'd like to say something. Oh, I want to thank the Robinson family and I want to thank uh, Gina for organizing, setting this up, and keeping the Robinsons and the family nationwide uh, uh, up to date on what is going on and what did happen. And we hope to get together again because I used to come out there and I used to enjoy those family reunions. And they I do have picnics. videos. Picnics. I have, well, pic picnics, my wife say. And I do have videos that was made during those picnics, those family reunions. And uh, I look forward to doing it again. And I enjoyed yourself. And, and bigger. the family here in Chicago, we got sharing it. Y'all have a lot of family here in Chicago that Sharon would come to Chicago. When she came to Chicago, she had favorite restaurants she wanted to go and eat. And uh, we would do it. And uh, she would have good times here. And we here in Chicago is going to miss her very much. But she's equal in our hearts as well as in your heart. <laughs> So she's still living within us. And her favorite word was peace. And her favorite word was peace. So I'm going to say <laughs> to the family. And thanks again. Thank you, Cousin Joe. Thank you, Miss Daisy. Hi, can I speak? Uh, it's, a, it's Annette from Seattle. Yeah, and then I see Liddy's hand up. So then after. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> no, go ahead, Annette. And then Liddy. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, I first of all, I just want to thank the family um, for this gathering. And I've heard a lot of stories today about Sharon. Um, I met Sharon probably about 22 years ago. Um, I met her in a boot camp in Oakland uh, with Carmen West. And I was um, getting myself, my body together. And so was Sharon. She, and Sharon, everybody's talking about competition. When I first met her, I just want you guys to know that she was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful person. And I got to know her on some steps that's in Oakland around the lake. And we had to take those steps two by two. And she was in front of me and I was saying, Oh no, I got to catch up with this woman. Who is who is she? Who is this woman? Because I was competitive too at the time. And as we would do those steps and conditioning our bodies, she would tell me, well, you know, we have all these people behind us. And if we're in the front, we have to make sure to bring them on because guess what? Uh, Carmen said, we can't finish, we got to finish all these, these steps. And the steps was about, I, I give it about like 75 steps 
up and down. We have to bring these people with us. And I said, of course, we're going to bring them with us. And I said, uh, I just, I, I, I said, we have to do this. And we get to the very end of this um, camp and we had to do those stairs and we had to do those stairs 12 times, 75 steps. And we had to bring these people in and on. Sharon's like, I'm gonna start it. You gotta be there right with me to bring them in. And we brought them in. It was one young lady, we would get on the side of her and we'd go, come on, baby, you can do it. Come on, one more step, come on step. Come on, come on, come on, we can do it. And Sharon said, guess what? We, we all made it and at the end, we just jumped for joy. And that is when I first met her and said, she's going to be my friend for life. I love this woman. And we have been friends for a very, very long time. Um, I used to go to East Bay Church of Religious Science. Um, I didn't know she was going to that church. And I would see Sharon there. And um, I got married. Um, we were in another camp. and. I was getting myself together to get married with my body. And, and Sharon said, oh no, we, 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 we gonna, you're gonna look great. You're gonna look really, really good in that wedding dress. And so I met my husband, Leon. Come on over here, Leon. Mm -hmm. Leon doesn't want to say anything, <laughs> but here's Leon. Mm -hmm. Leon and, and I got, we got married. And with us getting married, um, um, we met Rockland and Sharon would come to Seattle all the time. And I would just, I would love her. Cause she said, we have to come there because I have to hike. I have to go boating. I have to go kayaking. I have to go to the mountain. And I said, Mount Rainier. She says, yes. I said, I don't go to Mount Rainier. I'm, I've, I've been living here for like over like, you know, five or six years. And she goes, no, we're going to Mount Rainier. And I said, well, Sharon, I, I don't, I don't know if I want to go to Mount Rainier. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of heights. She says, too bad. We're going. So we got in the car and we went around Mount Rainier and I had the best time of my life. I still talk about that to this day, Mount Rainier. But I just want to say, I loved her you guys so much. I don't want to start crying, but I love my, my sister. I loved her so much. I'm going to miss her so much. She meant so much to me. Oh, she meant so much to me. Forgive me for crying. I just loved her so, so, so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you for letting us share. Peace and blessings to everybody. <clears throat> Thank you. So, so um, we'll just have, well, we'll do two more speakers. I see Liddy and then I see, I think that's Carmen. Um, and then we're going to close uh, with a song today. Okay, so go ahead. Then. So I'm muted. Can you hear me? Good. I'm one of uh, so talk about crying. Wait, I'm one of Sharon's sisters from Isis Rising, and I met Sharon maybe about I don't know. I don't do time so well, so I'd say maybe twenty some odd years ago, and I showed up one day and knocked on Sharita's door, and Isis Rising was a drumming group, and we drummed in Oakland. And it was started, I think, in East Bay uh, with East Bay Church. And this group of women came out and started drumming together. And I showed up uh, one day and said I wanted to come and join the group. And I was the first woman of non-woman of color, shall we say, to join the group. And I remember sitting around in this group and they didn't know how I got there, what happened, and they didn't know what to say. They're all so polite, right? And so I remember Sharon leaning out. So we'd already drummed or tried to drum because we were really new then. And we're sitting around Sharita's great big table. And I'm sitting next to Jennifer and trying to be quiet because I'm not naturally quiet, but I thought I better try to be a little bit quieter than traditional. And so all of a sudden this head leans out way down the group and so she said so Sharon says so how did you find us here and so it, I, I then sort of said how I did but I played kinkany with Sharon in the back all the time she and I played the same instrument and or the same drum we uh everybody loves Sharon in our group everybody 
all the various things that everybody has always said about Sharon. She's inclusive. She's she's present. She's loving. I don't ever remember her being in a bad mood. I don't remember her ever being uh, nasty. Um, I don't ever remember her talking negatively about somebody. Perhaps she might have said something at one time about somebody if they were really horrendously bad, but I don't ever remember it. I just, you know, so unlike myself. So anyway, so I just wanted to say that I loved her. I love her now. I love her forever. I see her face. I dream next to her. I'll always think of her. And everybody in the group sends their love. And we're very, we're very grateful to have had her as a part. And actually, I think I played at one of the Robinson family dinners at, at a picnic in Oakland. I thought, these people are looking a little bit familiar. There had to have been a great big family something happen in Oakland with 10,000 Robinsons and we came and played. What a kick that was. So uh, nice to see everybody in the family again. And you, I'm looking at you. You look so much like Sharon. Your smile is so much like hers. It is like freaky kind of to sit there. She, you're her younger self. I hope that you do as well as she has done in her life. Thank you so much for allowing me to share. And my condolences to everybody, especially Rockman. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I want to say every every cousin, every female cousin, I think looks like has looked like Sharon at some point in Sharon's life. Like I was looking through all the pictures, I was like, "There's wonderful. There's Taylor. There's Shan. There's Heather." Just in the faces. Oh, sorry. Okay. And there's Dana. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Dana. <laughs> Go ahead, Carmen. Sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. I forget I have to use my earphones. Um, I just wanted to um, say condolences to the family and um, I had a mix up with the time. So I'm really sorry about that. Thank you for letting me share. I'll make this really quick and and Annette, that was, uh, I'm Carmen West and I'm owner of Bo uh, God's Boot Camp Ministry, which Sharon took part take in. That's how Annette and Sharon met. And uh, it was 15 stairs, Annette, that you guys have to go up, uh, well, 15 times over um, 85 steps at Cleveland Cascade. And we used to have a good time. Sharon was a huge supporter of, um, of my business, a very spiritual woman herself and loving um, person that she was, um, you know, sometimes when the darkness and the discontent would hit, she would be one of the first persons that I would call and part of my tribe. And I, um, I'm just going to really, really miss her. She and I worked on a health fair together. Um, we were co-chaired a health fair at East Bay Church, and we did so well together. I just thought, my God, this girl is just absolutely uh, amazing um, that she's just able to step in and just take care of so many things. And, you know, um, a lot of people have said what I was going to say, always loving, always, you know, um, grateful, always, um, you know, bringing the peace. Uh, I had some women over a couple of years ago when Sharon came and she brought the drums and she brought the sage and she drummed and saged us up and lifted our spirits and our love because it was a sister circle. And um, she was just really able to change the, the, um, the room. And so I just really want to thank um, my sister, you know, for being there, um, honoring my, my practice of the uh, Goddess Boot Camp Ministry, elevating spiritual practice through intense physical fitness, as she did for years here, um, one of my greatest supporters. And, um, you know, it's still unbelievable, but I love her dearly. And again, you know, I want to thank to the family for your, for um, doing this memorial to a very wonderful person. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, Taylor, you ready? 
Uh, yeah, I guess as I'll ever be. I'm having some technical issues. My connection's not so great and I'm getting emotional. So just <laughs> hang in there with me, everyone. Um, oh, I'm, I'm Taylor. Like, I'm one of Taylor? <laughs> you want to come, huh? come back here? And get well, the file is on my computer, so oh, okay. I'd have to um, So let's just pray. Yeah, I'll get through it. Hopefully I'll share it. will help me out. Um, so yeah, I'm one of her nieces and I, uh, I wanted to sing a little something for you guys in her honor. Um, oh God, I'm getting emotional. It's all right. <laughs> she got your back. All right, so here we go. Let's go. Can everyone hear it? Thank you. Really fabulous, gorgeous voice. Amazing. Excellent, excellent. All right, Seth. Thank you. Very <laughs> nice. Well, Jenna, you gonna strum on the Yuki? <laughs> <laughs> the Yuki? What? <laughs> well, you know what? It sounds like me and Taylor need to get together and maybe record something, and then and then when we do that, we'll put it out to this collective and and. Uh, um, so yeah, so uh, thank you everybody for coming. Um, thank you everybody for, for paying your respects and, and, and sharing your memories and stories of, of, our, of Sharon, of our Aunt Sharon, our cousin, our friend, our sister. Um, this has been really special um, and really meaningful to me I, and I think for the rest of our family. I don't know, Heather, if you wanna say anything to close us out. I just wanna close us out in prayer if that's okay. Um, so I just come before you, Lord God, um, thanking you for this opportunity to join together on behalf of Aunt Sharon, uh, sending her off to you with um, as much love and joy and thankfulness as we can muster um, as we simultaneously take in the the pain of losing her here on this earth. And it is my prayer that everyone 
uh, on this Zoom call would um, come to know you, um, that your um, eternal life would be um, given to all of us as it was given to Aunt Sharon, that uh, we would all join together again in the heavens um, because that's where she would want us all to come together. And um, so I ask that uh, you just bless us um, to see more of you, to, to enjoy more of you, to love like you and um, to uh, give us another day to um, get right here on earth um, and make this place better before we leave it like Aunt Sharon did. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. Love you all. I'm gonna stay. Now I'm gonna stay. Beautifully done, family. You look beautiful. Stay. Also, I was gonna just let everybody know in the Bay Area, we're gonna be doing a ride in honor of Sharon, a bike ride. Oh, right. yeah, so we'll that Thank you. When will that happen? <laughs> uh, we'll get an out, Carmen. So good to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> Who is that? Pat. 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 Oh, hi, hey, honey. How are you? Um, hi. It, well, let, let, let us know. It, it, it'd be really good if um, the people at our mills would, maybe we could try to start a scholarship in her name. At Wonder, Mills, that would be, or, that, yeah, that would be amazing. And that so I'll, I'll reach out. I think that you know we could do that. Um, yeah, that would be beautiful. Yeah. So um, I will. If anybody's interested, I will work hard on that. Thank you. We'll look into that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Of course. Yeah. It's a great idea. <laughs> Okay. Hey, host. 